Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, a uh, long, big project. So I'm going to go through the sculpting process, or probably just let it play out actually, of sculpting uh, this bongo horn. I sculpted two bongo horns using the same sculpt, so it's pretty much the same thing. The bending video will be probably maybe next week or something, but that's where I've changed the direction of the bends to create the other horn. But for this video, I'm going to go through how I sculpted this bongo horn, so keep watching. Okay, so funny story. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be using monster clay for this particular sculpt and then I'm going to be molding it in silicon and then casting it in resin. So I marked out a 70 centimeter uh, space for the horns because the Calgary Zoo requested the horns be 70 centimeters or thereabouts. So I started uh, laying out <laughs> uh, a log, I guess, um, of the monster clay, which looked like a poop. And uh, so, yeah, so where my tape is, I started measuring uh, and laying out the whole of the monster clay. So the monster clay is a wax-based clay and it doesn't go hard, but it you can melt it in the microwave. So I melted it in the microwave and then I'm just uh, laying out the size. And then once it's roughly the, the shape that I'm happy with, I can start bending it into shape and sort of shaping all the curves and stuff while it's still, uh, while the clay is still warm. But um, I, once this has been shaped and I'm happy with the way it looks, I need it to dry or need it to cool for, um, for it to be able to hold its own weight because it is wax based and uh, it is quite malleable when it's hot or warm. Uh, so, and it is quite thick this time. So I had to let it dry pretty much overnight uh, or cool overnight to be able to lift it up to um, continue the sculpting. And as always, I've always I've got reference images over on my computer to make sure I'm sculpting it the right way, because uh, they are horns, and the zoo wanted a pair of horns, so I've got to make sure that the curves and the bends are in the right place. So once I'm happy with the um, basic shape, I can start smoothing everything out, and uh, it's quite cool at this point, but cool enough not not but cool enough to keep keep it a little bit malleable, and uh, I can sort of make it a bit smoother. So what tool I'm using is a rake tool and I have a video over on my Patreon on how I made that rake tool. It's um, got a really fine tooth on it which I can drag across so if you want to know how I made it it's over on my Patreon you get access to it for my five dollar and up tiers um, but yeah heaps of stuff on there link is in the description as well so once I'm happy and I've sort of smoothed out most of the horn I can start adding those curves I added basic preliminary curves uh, at the beginning but now I want to make them more of a sharper edge so I'm basically uh, just applying some of that that hot clay uh, just be careful that you don't burn yourself uh, onto the edges of the horn and, I, and I'm sort of creating an edge with my fingers and then smoothing it out again with that rake tool that I mentioned earlier um, and I did this throughout the whole horn and I sort of had to redo it when I did the second horn as well because I had to sort of mess it up a little bit to bend it the other way. And this is also a different rake tool. It's got a loop on the end of it with a sort of beveled edge. And that's just to take like more of a chunk off um, the actual sculpture. So you can get these in any clay packs. I got this in a pottery pack that was really cheap. So um, check it out in your local craft store. You'll find something, a pack of tools that um, have heaps of different things in it. Um, so anyway, now what I'm going to do, and I'm happy with basically that little curve I've got there. I want to make another curve that will uh, eventually attach to that one I put on earlier. And I'm just smoothing it out a bit more because it was a bit too harsh. And then uh, adding more clay to the base because I wanted a little bit thicker and a little bit more of a, uh, a shape to it. So again, adding that uh, warm clay and uh, just smoothing it out and, you know, working it in to make it um, incorporated. So again, going over the other side uh, with the same technique, doing some more of those edgings. Uh, again, you don't have to be too particular when you're just putting it on. Uh, just get the clay on there and then uh, you can refine it uh, later on when it's cooler. So that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm using again my rake tool and just filling in little bits and pieces that I uh, think need a little bit more clay and just again going over it with the rake tool. 
So at this point, I got my smaller replica that I made for the Calgary Zoo of the Hull doll, just so I have a 3D piece in front of me. Uh, I did sculpt these horns um, as well, but they're obviously not as detailed as these horns are going to be because they're quite small. So I basically had um, to get the curves right. I wanted a 3D shape right in front of me. And then I can uh, work a bit better and uh, didn't realize the camera was focusing on the horns and not my work. <laughs> So now, now that I've added all the clay, I can start going over and refining again with that clay, uh, with that uh, rake tool uh, and making the clay all smooth. Once you have smoothed it all out uh, with the rake tool, it leaves like little grooves in it, which you can then smooth out using some isopropyl mystrate or uh, a mix of the mystrate and isopropyl uh, alcohol. And that way that will, um, that will make the clay a bit smoother and it'll also evaporate once it dries as well. So a uh, good tip if you wanted to smooth something out to use that particular uh, product. I get mine from Barnes here in Australia, um, but I'm sure you can find it at any like molding supply store or like special effects store or specialty craft stores or something. Um, but yeah, I find it really handy and I just use a uh, paintbrush to apply it and just smooth it out. It sort of melts it a little bit and um, you can get that smooth texture. Um, just maybe use a softer brush because it can leave some uh, marks in the actual sculpture. So I think I spent about a good couple of hours to a week uh, sculpting this horn. I wanted to get it right and all the details right. The curves are like the biggest, um, the biggest headache there was, was the curves. Um, because you can't exactly twist it monster clay because sometimes it separates and gets like a bit weaker so um, yeah that's why I added the, the curves on the horn the way I did um, but yeah and it's, I spent probably a day smoothing this out and making sure it's all level as well with my rake tools and um, yeah so it took quite a bit of time to sculpt this one uh, so once I'm happy with the way everything is looking, I can then go ahead and start adding all the little extra details. So that's like the little grooves and crevices in the horns. So I'm using a little tool, it's like a loop tool, which I can uh, run across the monster clay and it carves out a little snake. And then I'm just going over again with my finger to smooth out any rough edges and make it a bit more embedded so it looks like it's uh, a natural curve. Um, you can also uh, do this with a... Um, like a, a ball tool and with a piece of plastic over the top but I thought I wanted to carve this out so I thought this would be the best option um, and you can make these yourself as well and repair them yourself as you can see I did uh, so basically yeah the rest of the video is going to be um, me just creating some little textures over the horn so I'll, I'll have a couple of videos uh, up on my patreon about these horns so the first one is how not to mold <laughs> what you don't do when you're molding your uh, your horns um, and also an unethical and do not follow me way of actually molding these horns or what I did to mold these horns uh, so if you want to learn how to uh, half ass <laughs> half ass a mold then definitely check that out uh, really this sculpture requires a two-part mold which I really hate doing two-part molds so I uh, I did a workaround um, for this but if you you want a mold that is longer lasting definitely do a two-part mold I just really loathe and started running out of time to do a two-part mold so I did something a, a little bit of work around and then I also slush cast this um, these horns so I'll have a slush casting video over on my patreon on how I cast these horns um, so that will be coming up um, I'll also have um, a, how I bent the horn the other way to create the other horn that'll be on my YouTube for free um, so yeah heaps of things to come up with these horns all different from the art dolls as well so um, yeah anyway I'll uh, thanks for watching thanks to my patrons for supporting me I really appreciate it you can also check me out Instagram Facebook creatures of net my shop creatures of net and I'll catch you in the next one bye bye